Hello and welcome to another Yukon Q Center video. This video is going to be all about the divergence test for proving divergence of infinite series. In this video, I have three objectives. I'm going to prove why the divergence test works. I'm going to show you why it can't be used to prove convergence. And I'll show you some examples and non-examples of when to use the divergence test. Since this is a very thorough and comprehensive video, I recommend you take out a notebook and take notes as you follow along with me. First, let's take a look at what the divergence test says. It says, if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sequence a n is not equal to zero, then the series of a n diverges. In order to prove this, I'm going to prove something called the contrapositive to this statement. The contrapositive to a conditional statement of the form if a then b is a statement where you switch to the hypothesis a with the conclusion b and you negate them. So in the case of the divergence test, the contrapositive is, if the series of a n converges, then the limit as n goes to infinity of a n has to be equal to zero. In order to prove the contrapositive, and therefore in order to prove that the divergence test is true, I'm gonna rely on a couple key ideas, and I'm gonna illustrate the first key idea using this specific series here. Notice that this series is a geometric series where my r value is equal to a half, and because the absolute value of this r is less than one, I could conclude by the geometric series test that this series converges. Since it converges, I could use this formula to calculate that its infinite sum is two. Another way to write that its infinite sum is two is to write it like this. And I could generalize this equation by saying, for all convergent series, the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is equal to n, where n is some real number. To illustrate the second key idea that I need for the proof, let's take a look at the first four terms of that same geometric series. I could say that the sum of the first four terms is equal to S4, where it stands for the sum of the first four terms of the series. Notice that I could change this equation to be this. These are the first three terms of the series. I could call this S3 for the sum of the first three terms, and this is plus A4, where A4 stands for the fourth term of the series. Notice then what I could do is subtract S3 from both sides and what I get is A4, the fourth term of the series, is equal to the sum of the first four terms minus the sum of the first three terms. And I could generalize this equation like so. Now let's take our two key ideas and put them into practice. This is the contrapositive that I need to prove. Since it's given to us that the series A and converges, from that, it immediately follows that we could say the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn has to be equal to n, where n is some real number. From one of the other key ideas, we know that this has to be true. So what I could do is, I'll take the limit as n goes to infinity of both sides of the equation, and notice, we know from what I wrote above that the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn has to be equal to capital N. So this is equal to n minus something. Let's think for a second about what this is going to be. Even though we have this minus one, we're still looking at the same sum and looking at what happens as we go to infinity. So the fact that we have the minus one is actually not gonna affect the limit at all. This is also gonna be equal to a n and any number minus itself is just going to be zero. And that's exactly what I wanted to prove. I wanted to prove that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to zero. I conclude by saying this claim up here and its contrapositive, the divergence test, both have to be true. Now let me address a very common but very fatal misconception. A lot of people think since the divergence test is true, what that has to mean is if we took the limit as n goes to infinity of a n and that equals zero, 
then the series AN has to converge. This is not necessarily going to be true. And we can see that with this example and this counterexample. Notice that with both of these series, this one being 1 divided by n squared and this one being 1 divided by n, if we took the limit of the sequences, both of the limits are 0. However, by the p-series test, we know that the series 1 divided by n squared converges, whereas the series 1 divided by n diverges. So, the takeaway from here is you cannot use the divergence test to prove convergence. If you were to get that the limit of any sequence is equal to zero, you need to use some other test in order to say whether it converges or diverges. Now that we've looked at a proof for the divergence test and we know when to use it, let's apply it to an example. I want to prove that this series either converges or diverges. Notice that this is a rational function where we have the same degree in the numerator as we do the denominator. And you might already know, if we were to take the limit as n goes to infinity of this kind of function, we could just take the ratio of the leading coefficients and get that the limit is 1. However, in case you didn't know that, or if you would like to prove that more thoroughly, we could apply L'Hopital's rule, because this expression is of the form infinity over infinity. I do it again here. I do it again one last time to show you that the limit is equal to 1. And since the limit is something that's not 0, I can use the divergence test to conclude that this series diverges. Now let's look at an example of a series where we cannot use the divergence test. With this rational expression here, you might notice that the degree in the numerator, 2, is smaller than the degree in the denominator, 4. And what that means is the limit of this kind of expression is always going to be equal to 0 if we're doing n goes to infinity. However, once again, if you have a hard time remembering that, or if you would like a more thorough explanation of why it's zero, we could apply L'Hopital's rule again. And from this work, you could see that the limit is zero. And because of that, we cannot use the divergence test to say anything about this series. We're going to have to use a different test. Now let's summarize the key ideas from this video. The divergence test says if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sequence a n is not equal to zero, then the series of a n diverges. The divergence test cannot be used to prove convergence, only divergence. And the divergence test is worth considering any time you have a, what I like to call, equal degree rational function where the numerator and denominator have the same degree, just like the example I showed you, where we have a top-heavy rational function, which means the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, or any other time you could immediately tell that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is not going to be equal to zero. Don't consider using the divergence test if you have a bottom heavy rational function, like the non-example I showed you on the previous slide, or any other time you could immediately tell that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is equal to zero.